In this online lecture, we're going to talk about protons bonded to oxygen and nitrogen, how they appear on the HNMR. What we're going to see here, key point number one, is that no splitting is observed for protons on a nitrogen or an oxygen if the sample is run with trace amounts of acid or base. This is due to something called proton exchange. We're also going to see number two, that the signals for protons on an N or O are usually broader than other signals on the HNMR. This is to our benefit because it makes these signals easier to pick out on an HNMR. So let's understand our key points here. Let's say you have this alcohol right here and you put him in the HNMR. Notice because it's an alcohol, you have a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen. But let's say we run our sample pure and dry. This means the sample molecule is simply by itself in the NMR. There's no solvent and no other reagents. Let's use what we've learned so far in this chapter to figure out what the HNMR spectrum would look like for this molecule. Well, let's start right here and call this the A-type hydrogen. That would make these right here the B-type hydrogens, and the methyl hydrogens would be the C-type hydrogens. So that means our sketch right here we should expect to see three peaks in our HNMR. The most shifted one, of course, should be the A hydrogen, because he's the closest to the oxygen. Then next up should be the B hydrogens, and the least shifted should be the C-type hydrogens. Notice we have split signals here. Let's make sure we understand them. For the A-type hydrogen, let's calculate his N value. Notice his neighboring hydrogens are the B hydrogens, and there's two of them. So the N value for A is 2. Using the N plus 1 rule gives us 3, which means we should expect to see A split into a triplet. Also notice where this peak is occurring, close to the 5 ppm value. We'll see a little bit later that that's typical for OH hydrogens. Now let's do our splitting analysis for the B-type hydrogen. What is his N value? Notice the B hydrogens have two neighbors, the A hydrogen and the C hydrogens. And remember, since these are not chemically equivalent, the N plus 1 rule will fail for the B hydrogens, so we should expect to see him as a multiplet. And sure enough, that's what we got right here. Lastly here, for the C-type hydrogens, what are their N values? Well, his only neighbors are the B-type hydrogens. There happens to be two of them, so the N plus 1 rule here equals 3. Therefore, we should expect to see him as a triplet. So notice here, running this sample in pure and dry conditions yields what we would expect on the HNMR. However, this is not typically how alcohols are run in the NMR. Most alcohols, if you remember, need to be dissolved in some kind of solvent. And let's say that particular solvent happens to have a trace amount of acid or base. Let's talk about what would happen if, let's say, there were a trace amount of base in our solvent with our alcohol. Remember, OH hydrogens are slightly acidic, so it's possible that a base could rip off the hydrogen on the alcohol. If he does do that, then we end up with this as a result. However, remember, this type of acid-base reaction is reversible, which means what's actually happening is that this reaction is going back and forth, back and forth. This is what's called proton exchange. What this means for us for the HNMR is notice the arrow pointing to this oxygen here. Because of proton exchange, it means that hydrogen is not always going to be present on the molecule. And if he happens to not be present, then we shouldn't expect to see splitting. Remember, splitting is a local event. When you're a hydrogen that's in proximity to another hydrogen, you split each other's signals. Notice, if your OH hydrogen is not present, it can't split the CH2 hydrogens, and vice versa. This is what we're learning here. In fact, let's look at the HNMR if the sample happens to be in a trace amount of acid, or base. In this case, this would be the HNMR that we would get. Notice the A hydrogen right here, because he's going to be going through a proton exchange, we don't expect to see him split by the B hydrogens which means that's why we end up seeing a singlet for the A-type hydrogen. Notice this is also true for the B-type hydrogen. Notice since there's a chance here that the A-hydrogen will not be connected to the oxygen, 
That means only the C hydrogens are the B hydrogen's neighbors. And since there's three C hydrogens, N plus one, three plus one in this case would be four, we would expect to see the B signal split into a quartet. So again, take home message. We typically don't observe splitting for hydrogens connected to either oxygen, and also this is true for nitrogen. And since this is the typical way that samples are run through the NMR, this is how we should effectively interpret the NMR for molecules that have an H attached to either an O or an N. Now, another thing I'd like you to know here is the relative shifting of these types of hydrogens. Notice your chart here. Typically, alcohol hydrogens peak at around 2 to 5. Amine hydrogens peak at around 1.5 to 4. Amide hydrogens around 5 to 8 and carboxylic acid hydrogens around 10 to 12. The alcohol hydrogens, amine hydrogens, and carboxylic acid hydrogens participate in proton exchange, so it's these hydrogens that we should not expect to see splitting. However, there's something else we should know about these hydrogens on the HNMR. The actual signal right here for the A hydrogen appears broader on the HNMR, which simply means it's wider. This is also due to proton exchange. This broadening occurs because the rate of proton exchange is not slow enough to result in a clearly split signal. So we could almost think of this signal as a collection of signals on top of each other. Or you could almost think of it as signal averaging. However, this is an aid to us when we're trying to determine structure. Because a peak like this makes it obvious that you probably have some kind of alcohol or an amine as your sample molecule. So, what have we learned here? Key points. We saw, number one, no splitting is observed for protons on nitrogen or oxygen if the sample is run with a trace amount of acid or base, and this is due to proton exchange. We also saw, number two, the signals for protons on nitrogen or oxygen are usually broader than other signals on an HNMR spectra.